this is where I said that's what I've done is I've cut a, a stay down, kind of sharpened it on both ends. What we're going to do is pierce the back legs between the tendon and the leg bone. We're going to stick that stay in there. Still too long. This serves the purpose of holding the animal's legs apart while you do what you get to do. You, they make a tool for this, it's called a spreader. Or you can make your own. We are going to clean this a little different. We're going to try to clean it to where we can leave the hide on. All I am going to do is unzip the middle, draw around the exits, Tie them off and pull them down between the pelvis, the pelvis bone, and lay all the insides out. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave this height on so we can singe it in the bush or out there. If you can leave the height on an animal and eat it, you're better off because you're not exposing the meat to the outside world. You don't lose the fat and the extra energy that's stored in the skin or between the skin and the muscle is just a better deal if you can do that. So that's what we're going to try to pull off tonight. Uh, this one's a little big for that, but you work with what you got. Squeamish, look away now. Helps to have a sharp knife, but you still want to be careful when you do this. People. This is actually a pretty young sow. Probably ain't even a year old. How many of y'all picked up this the same mouth I did in the fish with? Really? Multiple purpose. This is small onion. Does anybody else notice this West S boy spending a whole lot of time on the south end of this here hall? What's he doing back there anyhow? I don't even want to know where my finger is right now. I reiterate, thinking you can do this and actually being able to do this, two totally different animals. Stop crying about not being able to see stuff. It's like almost midnight. Golly. This is us. Singing a peak. Oh, that smells good. I'm going to put them down a little lay more. I'll lay her over. Use that up. I may not be no wilderness expert, but whenever we slaughter hogs, we use one of them weed burners to burn that hair off. This right here looks a little bit excessive, and maybe like this boy really, really don't know what he's doing. Maybe he just ain't got a weed burner. No small onion, I don't have a weed burner. If I had a weed burner, I would have used a weed burner. This is how I would do it if I was out in the woods without a weed burner anyway. That's kind of the concept. Why don't you get your own stinking channel? Wait 
in right at 50 pounds. Uh, well, close to 55 on the, uh, you know, I guess what you call live weight. Took uh, about 20 pounds of uh, unnecessary stuff out of her. We didn't save the liver and the kidneys. We are going to process this down into eatable size portions. I got some video. We this thing come in last night, and uh, well, you got to do it when when it's fresh. So we had to do most of this in the dark. I bagged it and put it in the in the cool spot for overnight. And, uh, got it back out here for. For the rest of it today. Now, the part I did in the video was you really want, if you're gonna keep any of it, kind of store it around. This isn't exactly roughing it, but it's a little propane torch. I suggest you buy one with a little bit higher quality than that. But, uh, Found a magic wand to cross the razor stubble here, and it disappeared. I don't know how much of this I'll be able to get on film for you, but I'll do my best. We'll cut the front legs off, back legs, ribs, bacon. Uh, about the only part of the pig that's going to wind up going in the trash is this probably even going to uh, bury the head or maybe put it in the oven make some tamales let's see for those of you with a bug out bag that don't have nothing but some light cordage rope. I mean, 550 paracord will do a lot, but I actually tried to horse this up here with 550, but I couldn't get my hand. The, the amount of pain I was feeling trying to pull that 550, as opposed to pulling this 3 8 inch rope. Yeah, maybe some rope. Just because you can, don't mean you're going to want to. I'm going to give her a quick bath, and uh, or well, We'll run over with a torch again, then give her a quick bath, and I'll bring y'all back for the important part. All right, then start cutting this bad boy up, or bad girl up, in pieces. Y'all wanna watch? You don't wanna watch? It's just you, like, stop the video, because, well, I'm gonna do it anyway. Hey, small onion. I done snuck in here and cut the volume off of this because he just ran through and said the same thing he did on that first little clip up there about what he was going to cut out of it. And I didn't really want to have to listen to him. Didn't figure y'all wanted to have to listen to him again. So, yeah. He better change the locks on his house and get a new password on this computer thing. How tough these animals are when the shoulders aren't even attached. This is lunch. Yep. Open up the part that hadn't got seen. There it flies. I didn't hone my knife after I got through scraping, guys. The bad hillbilly. Hill Billy, at least he finally admits he's a dumbass. Don't even sharpen your knife before you start trying to butcher a sow. I'm, I, ain't, I just ain't watching him no more. What the heck is that? That ain't Hill Billy music. Shut up, Onion.
that, this here, watch it coming up. This is called my motivational speech a while ago. Look at that. He's honing his machete before he starts trying to whack on it. Here's where the shoulder blade was attached, or sort of. And go from that, basically straight up. The, all the meat, the main portion of meat runs right through here. You just want to take the, the ribs off. So you're just going straight down. Yeah, just don't cut your dag on hand off. don't have a big old machete or whatever, getting through here can be a little difficult. Um, not impossible, just to prove it. Again, the bigger the animal, the harder the bone. an animal to use the animal. Okay, you can see that dude.
get this cooking, you're going to have to, you know, maintain your heat. You don't want a big roaring fire under that. Here in a minute, I don't know if y'all be able to notice, but I've actually lifted it up about two and a half inches up off the coal. And that little corner up there, you can see the brick. Uh, what out in the bush is doing this, I brought the hog home. So, anyway, you know, it, it gets too hot. You can see here at the bottom, I've got a little hot on a couple of pieces. Didn't hurt anything, but I would have just soon cooked it a little slower. That's a couple of pieces I cut off. That's a chunk of the pelvis bone right there, and that's a hunk of ham. And one of the hams I cut off. And that there's the neck little. See right there, I got a little hot. The other thing back there flopping around all goosey like that's the jowl. Basically just a big piece of fat and skin with some meat running through it. Wes asked, this is some wild hog. Uh, she's only been departed from this world about twelve, thirteen hours or so. Uh, took a lot of work to get to this point right here to find out if it's worth all the effort. Don't expect this stuff to taste like a uh, store-bought pig, because they ain't gonna. It tastes way better. Oh, seriously, this is good. Some guy used a machete to cut it up, though. Not done yet. This is a piece of the just the skin, just a little chip in here. It's chewy. Store-bought pig, pork, whatever. It's still hot. Tastes a lot like artificial food. I don't know, soy and green or something. I guess my my mistake was having eating wild game, and then you eat the, uh, the non-wild game. And you're like, well, that don't taste right. But to me, this tastes right. Doing a service to the state, to my neighbors, to the natural ecology of the southern United States, all by making myself lunch.
até lá. Não dá. Man, it's good.